Tuberculosis. Which of the following symptoms are common in patients with active TB? Marked weight loss, increased appetite, dyspnea on exertion, or mental status changes? What do you guys say? They can't see it. Take that player reach limit. Click, click X. Because I can't see the question. Oh. Okay, marked weight loss. So let's talk about this before we move on to the next question. Patients with TB, the reason these people try and get more money, they need to stop. The reason that uh, we see marked weight loss is that they experience, oh, I think as people keep trying to get in, it's going to keep popping up. Anyway, uh, with tuberculosis, the patient's going to experience anorexia. They're not going to want to eat. And so we're going to see marked weight loss. In addition to that, we're also going to see fever chills, night sweats, these generalized symptoms we're going to see with tuberculosis. Let me go back for a second because 30 people chose the correct answer, but 33 of you guys chose a dyspnea on exertion. Uh-uh. The most common symptom is that marked weight loss. Yes, the patient may have uh, a dyspnea on exertion that uh, definitely is uh, possible, especially later um, in active TB, but the most common is going to be that weight loss. And let me, when, when I say weight loss, unexplained weight loss. Okay, let's keep going. Excited. Which lab technique is most commonly used, used to identify tubercle uh, bacilli in sputum? Is it acid fast staining, sensitivity testing, agglutination testing, or dark field illumination? You have to choose what you think the answer is. No. What do you guys think the answer is? Acid fast staining, very good. 35 of you guys chose that. Let me tell you something. When you are testing and you see acid fast bacilli, immediately you need to be thinking of tuberculosis. That's what they're talking about, okay? Very good. Which of the following anti-TB drugs are known to cause damage to the eighth cranial nerve? Streptomycin, INH, Amino, amino salicylic acid or myambutal? What do you guys think? You know you have like 130 something people there. Very good, streptomycin. So uh, streptomycin guys, this is an antibiotic. It's given very often for the patient with active TB. Something you guys have to understand about this medication, it's an aminoglycoside. And what do we know about aminoglycosides? They're very hard on the kidneys. They're hard on the liver as well. And they affect the eighth cranial nerve so much so that it can cause the patient to lose their hearing. The causative organism of TB is mycobacterium tuberculosis. True or false? What do you think? And the correct answer is true. That is a causative organism for tuberculosis. True or false? A patient with TB should avoid ingestion of alcohol at all costs. True or false? What do you think? True. True. Um, the patient um, that is that has active TB, their because 
when it comes to TB as students, you guys only seem to think about the lungs, but you forget about the liver and think about these medications that the patient's taking for TB. They're very hard on the liver. Remember, the liver is what's responsible for metabolizing these drugs. So at all costs, they need to avoid alcohol. True. Which vitamin is depleted when taking uh, TB antibiotics? Calcium, magnesium, B6, or thiamine, which is a B1. What do you guys think? B6. So um, why is this important? Well, B6 is important for uh, brain development and it's important for keeping not only the CNS, but your immune system strong. So that's important to know. What's the primary reason for giving more than one anti-TB drug simultaneously? This is a famous test question when it comes to TB. Make sure you guys know this. It potentiates drug actions. It reduces the side effects. It allows for decreased dosages that are needed, or it decreases the development of resistant strains of the bacteria. It decreases the development of resistant strains of the bacteria. So here's the thing, guys. When it comes to tuberculosis, it takes a very long time to treat. It's not like a normal, you know, a bacterial infection that you could give antibiotics and it clears out in a week or two or a viral, you know, infection that will run its course very shortly. With, uh, with um, tuberculosis, it takes a good amount, at least six months being on a cocktail, right? And so uh, the app, well, I'm giving you an answer, so I don't want to keep talk too much, but let me say this, um, the more amount of time that it takes, just think about it, that's more time for more strains to develop. And we want to avoid that from happening. And so that's why you'll see that uh, this patient will be on more than one medication. We want to decrease the risk of strains. Very good. Most of you guys got that correct. The most common route for transmission of tuberculosis is droplet nuclei, dust particles, water, or eating utensils. What do you guys think? Very good. Most of you guys got it. Droplet nuclei. Now, these particles are very, very small, but they can say, stay suspended in the air for hours. So, and how's it transmitted? Coughing, sneezing, talking, right? It can be transmitted and it stays in the air for hours. Now, this is why tuberculosis is considered to be... Um, uh, a community concern. Because anyone with active TB, they can go on the subway, they can go on the train, they could go on the bus, whatever, and they cough, sneeze, whatever, and those droplets can stay suspended in the air for hours. And so anyone that comes behind them, breathes it in, and before you know it, they're infected. And so that's why it's so important that the patient who has tuberculosis, it's important that um, they're compliant with taking their medications. And it's so important, okay? This is such a public uh, issue. It's so important that the government will literally take pay a nurse to go to that patient's home and watch them take that medication because they can infect people in their community, okay? Which goal is of highest priority for the patient with TB when working as a community health nurse? Providing emotional support, coordinating with various agencies, assessing or teaching the patient about their disease process. Think about what I just taught you when you're answering this question. What do you think the correct answer is? Very good. I'm so proud of you guys. Yes. Teaching the patient about their disease process. Why? Because we don't want them going out into their community and infecting everybody else. Very good. Awesome. 
The patient's negative pressure room should have how many fresh air exchanges per hour? Two, four, six, or eight. By the way, a famous test question is what type of room should they be in? And you need to know that it's negative pressure. So that's number one. You need to know that. But let me ask you, do you know um, how many air exchanges of negative pressure? Good. Six. That is the correct answer. True or false? Rifampin can turn bodily secretions like urine, sweat, and tears pink. What do you say, true or false? This is another famous test question. Not exactly this question, but the actual concept, the principle. Famous. You need to know this. False. More of you guys chose true than false. Okay, so let's talk about this. Rifampin, yes, it can turn the bodily secretion such as urine, sweat, tears, another color, but not pink. What's the color? Orange or even red, not pink. Something else you need to understand about this medication, when the patient's taking this medication, you have to warn them in advance that it can turn their secretions um, that orange reddish color, because if you don't tell them that they're going to freak out. Number one, number two, you have to teach them if they wear contacts for the amount of time that they're on that medication, they cannot wear contacts because remember bodily secretions, including tears, it will stain, it will stain their contacts. So they have to wear glasses for the time that they're taking this medication. Okay. We're down to our last question. What are the signs and symptoms of active tuberculosis? Select all that apply. How do we treat select all that apply as true or false? I'm not going to do it now because I want you to answer on your own, but here are your choices. Night sweats, chills, fever, weight gain, cough, urinary retention. I feel like I gave you guys the answer to this on the first question when I was explaining something. So everyone should get this right. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this, guys. With active TV, night sweats, I, I told you this already. We expect to see them have night sweats, fever, cough, chills, these generalized symptoms, not weight gain, if anything, because of the anorexia, we expect them to have weight loss and not urinary retention. Are you thinking of anticholinergics or something? That's not TB. So correct answer is night sweats, fever, cough, and chills. Guys, you guys did a great job. I'm already excited about um, the next Kahoot that we're going to be doing. Those of you who are watching this video, uh, please do not forget to like this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website and you can book your NCLEX review on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Those bookings, uh, the availability, it books up very quickly, but I still have some left. So make sure you check it out at nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.